Hello, welcome to the Jessica Brimer channel. I'm delighted to see you once again. I'm really delighted to see you today because what I'm going to share with you is something that will gladden your heart. Something that will at least bring some joy in the midst of all the chaos and sadness going on. Do you know the man called Ahmed Dati? You know that Dati, the Obi Dati guy? I mean, Peter Obi's vice presidential candidate. Have you ever listened to him speak? Look, I listened to this man speak and wow, I'm so happy. I said to myself, so we have people like this in Northern Nigeria and they allow somebody like Buhari to be our president. Oh, they didn't do well at all. They didn't do well. This guy, this um, Dati, he is so urbane. He is so brilliant. He is so articulate and fearless. He's completely fearless. Do you know that this guy granted an interview on Chinese television lately? And the interviewer was shaking in his seat. He was shaking. He's like, please don't put me into trouble. Don't say that. He said, I'm saying it. He said, I fear nobody. That's what he said. He said, I fear nobody. I'm saying it. I fear nobody. A friend sent me this video. You know, and I watched it and said, no, I'm going to share this video with you. You need to listen to what this guy said. You need to listen to that. You need to listen to him. It's wonderful. You know, he analyzed the whole scenario we are in now. He analyzed the situation we're in and he said, Buhari and the Chief Justice of Nigeria, that they dare not swear Tinubu in on May 29th. He said they dare not. He said because Tinubu did not meet the constitutional requirements electorally for you to be president of Nigeria. He did not meet the requirements. I want you to listen to him briefly before I summarize. Mm. Because they said that there's a certain ruling which says the FCT's estate. Good. FCT's estate. Where is the each of 25% for FCT. It is not there. That constitutional requirement has not been met. That certificate of return is null and void and cannot be sworn in as president. And let me tell you, the way they are going, disregarding the calls of the people, violating the constitution, let them even go ahead, even if they swear in to new Bush on 29th of May. They are swearing in an unconstitutional government. Nothing will change it. Um, I am not a careless, reckless speaker. I am working with the constitution there, that document right you just read. I'm following it. And I dare to tell you that swearing in Tinimbu and Shatima is as good as swearing in the Nigerian army on 29th of May. If you swear in uh, people that have not satisfied the requirement, you have by so doing ended democracy. The crisis I'm telling you now is that this our democracy is going to end by the way we are going. This democracy is going to end on the 29th of May, 2023. Please write it. Because I do you know my actions. I am very, very happy to say it. Do you know my actions. You know, we are just a... Listen, do those things. No, 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 I, I will. Because it, those are actually thoughts. You know why? Because those, there, are, there are allowable language to be used on them, especially as it relates to our nation and the unity of this country. Put your question and let me answer you. Put no, your no. question. I know what I'm saying. If, if there is an official... If you breach the constitution... But it, it, is it not left to the court to decide otherwise? This is already decided by the courts. But the authority in charge of election gave a declaration. Show it. If you are afraid for some things, don't ask for them. I am not afraid. I will have them. I will have a citizen mm -hmm. of the country mm -hmm. by the ethics and the guidelines of my profession. Yes. Lead by it. Yes. What is lawful? And I hope that you are lawful. Sign the law. And so whatever the stipulation of the law guides, <laughs> if you are agreed about something, you go to the court to seek redress. Isn't it? This document is a product of the legal system. It has been signed into law by the uh, President, uh, uh, Commander in Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I believe in this document. That is why I'm so lawful. That is why I'm so confident. And that is why I'm. <laughs> you know, what the guy is trying to say here is this the Constitution of Nigeria has already given a requirement. What you need to meet, the requirements you need to meet for you to become the president of Nigeria. And Tinubu has not met the requirements. I'm not talking about, he is not even talking about the fact that Tinubu reads the election. 
No, what he's saying that even the ringing that they rigged in Tinubu, all those numbers they rigged in for him did not meet the requirements. Section 134 of the Nigerian Constitution stipulates this that for you to be president of Nigeria, you must win to third of the states of the Federation and FCT and Abuja. So now, to third of the states of the Federation, we have 36 states. To third means 24 states. And it says that you must score 25% out of these 24 states. You don't need to score 100% in these 24 states. But at least you should score 25% out of these uh, 24 states. And the FCT. And the FCT. Tunubu scores. They got they gave him to, to um they gave him 24 states. All right. It didn't even score to 24 states. Well, they didn't remember to give him the FCT in their rigging. You know, it was crude rigging. They were in a hurry to rig and rig and rig. So they did not give Tunubu 25% from the Federal Capital Territory. The votes that they stole and awarded to him is just about 17%. It's about 17% of the Federal Capital. So the law says you must score 25% from the 24 states and the FCT. And the FCT. I, I heard, um, um, what's his name? Femi Falana. You know, you know, he's Tinubu's very close friend, you know. I heard him saying that um, FCT has been decided in the law as a state, that FCT is a state. Okay, so if FCT is a state, the, the, the constitution still says you must call 24%, uh, sorry, two-third of 24 states and FCT. So if FCT is a state, whether it is a state or it's just a town, the constitution said, and FCT. So if there is no and FCT, he didn't win the election. He, ha he didn't get up to 25% in the FCT. That's Federal Capital Territory. He got 17% in the FCT. So he didn't meet the requirement, the minimal requirement for you to be president of Nigeria. This is what um, uh, Dr. Dati is saying here. That he didn't meet the requirement. Therefore, it's absolutely unconstitutional to swear Tinubu in on May 29th. And the most interesting part of this interview is where that is said. He said, I dare Buhari and the CGN to swear in Tinubu on May 29th. He said, and they will face the consequences. He said, I dare them because it's unconstitutional. He went on to say that swearing in Tinubu is like swearing in a military general. A military general that didn't meet the constitutional requirement to be president of Nigeria is like just swearing a military general because they're military general. Say no, Tinubu has not met the minimum requirement according to section 134 of the constitution. You must win to third of the states of the federation, which is 24 states out of the states of the federation. And in these 24 states, you must get to 20 to 25% from the 24 states. And the FCT. He says it clearly. And the FCT. So I don't even know what Femi Falano was saying that the FCT is a state. So if FCT is a state, it says and the FCT. So where is the 25% from the FCT? That's what we're saying because Tinubu scored only 17% from the FCT. So they, they want to do something unconstitutional by swearing Tinubu in. That's what Dr. Dati said. He said they dare not. He said they dare not. He said he's daring Buhari and the Chief Justice of Nigeria to carry out this unconstitutional exercise and that they will face the consequences. <laughs> oh my world. You know, when I hear things like this coming from a northerner, it shows us that there are still brilliant, intelligent northerners that are not just crude and, and you know, very, very ruthless. In, in violence. This is an urbane man. This is an educated, enlightened man. This is a man that reasons, a northerner that can reason with you and say, bring out your argument. Let me bring out my argument. Even the Lord God says, come, come, let us reason together. Let us reason together. I've been wondering why the pastors, especially the Yoruba pastors in Lagos, are not speaking up against Tinubu's uh, wickedness on the Igbos. 
I don't know why they are not speaking out. Or don't you have people in your congregation? Don't you care about them? Don't you care about the fact that these traders, evil traders, have been locked out of their shops? I posted a video on, on my Facebook channel. I'll post it on my YouTube channel too, as well. They just got to their shops this morning and they were locked out by local government chairman. So there are things in their shops and their things. The next thing you hear is that they've set the market ablaze. They have set so many markets ablaze in Lagos because those markets are places where the Igbos trade. How can you be a pastor carrying Bible and you're keeping quiet over this iniquity? How can you? I mean, how, how, how do you go to bed at peace with yourself that you have spoken up for the, for the oppressed? The Bible said, let the oppressed go free. He said we should speak up for the oppressed, speak up for the poor, the needy, and those who cannot speak for themselves. Nigerian pastors, are these words not in your Bible in the book of Proverbs? Why are you not speaking out? This is criminal silence. The last time, I think I have to do another video on this. I, I just have to do another video on it because it, it, it's, 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 it's disheartening. It's shameful. It's, it's disgusting. It's annoying. The pastors are pretending that they don't know about this. I'm going to end this video here. I just want you to see that the Obidati movement is unshakable. The Obidati movement is real. And God is on our side. God is really on our side. Tunubu and them, the INEC people, in their hurry to rig the election, forgot what the constitution said that apart from sc sc scoring 25%, the other 24 states, you must also score 25% in the FCT. The, the constitution is clear. It say and the FCT. It didn't say, oh, uh, 25 states of the Federation, 24 states of the Federation only. No, it says, and the FCT. So you can't say, oh, FCT is a state. So it's already included. No, it's not already included. It said, and FCT. That's what it says. So let's see what happens. I'm praying to God. I say, God, just keep all of us alive. Fight this battle for us and give us victory in Jesus' name. I'm going to end this one here now. I'm going to do another video as well. The one that I'm just, I'm just going to speak to pastors. I'm just going to remind pastors that they can remain criminally silent over the xenophobia going on against Igbos in Lagos State. Please kindly click the subscribe button. Share this video as well. A lot of people need to have knowledge about, about what is going on. And uh, click the like button. If you're getting some value from what I'm saying, just click the like button. Click subscribe. Share this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Evangelist Jessica John Brimer. Cheers.